We are ready? Okay, very good. Good morning, thank you. Morning everyone. Thank you all for coming. It's nice to see you. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's see. How is everyone today? What shall we talk about today? Any questions, comments, suggestions? Yeah, we have two babies with us today. It's always a nice thing to have children around. Oh, they're sharing toys too. Look at that. <laughs> mm. Okay, uh, so new rule. Uh, what's a new rule? Uh, if we have nothing to talk about, then I go, no questions. Uh, no, uh, oh, Wei Mountain has a question. Go ahead, Wei Mountain. Yes, Master. Um, I have a question about the eight conscious. Uh, you, you mentioned that all um, past. Uh, memories uh, reside there. So, is it possible for us to access it uh, at any time that we want? Past memories? Yes, all the memories that we store in the eight consciousness, mm -hmm. can we access them at, at any time? Is there a way to do that? Is there a way to do that? Okay, let me go back to the fundamentals. Okay, so let's revisit, uh, revisit the concepts here. Okay. Um, I'm waiting for people to get ready, and there, there's some equipment issues here. Uh, the translation equipment, make sure that people have the proper equipment. Do we have a Chinese translation equipment? Xinxi. Okay, very good. All right. Okay. Um, okay. Hmm. In Buddhism, uh, were we taught that Human beings have eighth consciousness, consciousnesses, okay? Uh, and that's part of our makeup. Uh, the consciousness uh, arise because of confusion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm. Mm. So, uh, and while we're confused, uh, these consciousness arise, and cultivation uh, is about transforming those consciousnesses into wisdom. And that's, uh, you can transform these eight consciousnesses into four wisdoms. And that's what enlightened people do. Uh, not uh, not uh, Hinayana practitioners. If you have to go to the level of enlightenment for Mahayana before you can transform those eighth consciousnesses into wisdom, or into the four wisdoms, okay? So that's a general concept. That's why it's important to understand and know about consciousnesses. Uh, we we uh, use them uh, while we are confused, and uh, we cultivate, and this cultivation process will transform them, all right? So, um, and the question is about uh, the eighth consciousness. Uh, quickly, uh, I give you some overview of what the eighth consciousness are. Okay, uh, for background information, uh, the eighth consciousnesses are uh, the first six consciousnesses are your your uh, the consciousnesses are uh, that arise from your sense organs. We have the five organs: the eyes the uh, ears, the nose, the tongue, that's four, uh, the skin or the body, that's five, okay, that's touch. So, so the consciousnesses are the sight, eyes, we give you the consciousness called sight, uh, 
uh, the nose consciousness is called smell. Hmm? Uh, the ear consciousness is called hearing. Yes? What about the tongue consciousness? It's called taste. Right? And uh, the body consciousness is called touch. So this is, this is how we function normally you know, as living beings. We are aware of these five consciences that, that, that are constantly uh, bringing in information to us. So far, so good? Okay. So I touch this statue here, and then this sense of touch here, the consciousness of sense of touch, touch, will bring me information. For example, this touch, it tells me that this thing here, this, uh, the wood, the feel of wood, okay? Uh, the, uh, when you touch the wood, it gives you certain information, the, the, the feel of wood, the warmth of wood, uh, and so forth. And that consciousness, that information is brought in to oh, the uh, six consciousness. Okay, the first five, the hearing. Okay, and the hearing. You hear a noise. You hear people talking. That's uh, the hearing there. That's the hearing consciousness brings that information, the sound, into our brains. That processes it. So far, so good. That's how it works. That's uh, uh, that's how we operate uh, as uh, human beings. So the. The five consciousnesses bring in, uh, bring in data. Uh, the data there, there, by the way, this is an important concept as well. Uh, it's called sound. It's called uh, fragrance. It's called uh, um, uh, what? Uh, uh, the object of sight, okay, or an object, and so forth. So. So the information there from the outside world, external world, is brought into our internal world, our bodies, through the consciousnesses. Okay? And that's how we interact with the outside world. See how, how scientific the Buddhist knowledge is. Think about it. Okay? It's, the Buddha's wisdom is incredible. Okay? Uh, what would he, uh, it, it, it coincides with medical knowledge, with scientific knowledge, with uh, all kinds of uh, knowledge we acquire, we develop. Hey, there he is. Uh, I thought you couldn't walk. Wait a minute. <laughs> the whole week. Oh, it's getting. All right. And so. The consciousnesses are important for us to function. At the same time, it also confuses us because we are bombarded with all sorts of data all day long because we hear sound, we smell things. I hear, sit here and I can smell you know, the incense here, uh, the, the, the ashes in the tray here, in the, uh, in the sensor here near me. So that carries a certain level of, 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 uh, of, uh, of fragrance, of, of, of incense uh, fragrance that, that you are gathering in. You know, people are gathering in constantly. Or I look at you. you know, I look at you know, the side brings in, in so much information. And you see, this is why our sixth consciousness is the mind, is bombarded with information constantly. That's why life is deemed to be overwhelming. You notice that? It gets more overwhelming, doesn't get any better. So far, so good. That's who we are. That's how we live our lives. Being overwhelmed by the external data, the external world, because our consciousness are constantly Processing information. That's why we never at rest. Think about it. Hmm? Look, your eyes are constantly seeing things. 
right? And when you see something, oh, that's gray. Oh, that's a camera. Oh, that's a, what's his name again? You know, that, that, that's what, do we? No, no, it's do we, I think. Okay, so you see, the information is, 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 is constantly being brought in, whether we like it or not. And the mind is encouraged constantly to process the information. And never mind, but the question is, what about the memories? Okay? In general, when the information comes to our mind, here's what happens. Okay? The mind massages it. It says, oh, that's gray. But what kind of shade of gray is that? It processes it. So far, so good. So the mind is so busy processing. It's red, but you know, uh, it's closer to uh, uh, oranges than, 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 than uh, cherry red. You know, it processes constantly. And that's why we're so tired all day. Okay? Not only that, okay? We get the information, the sixth consciousness, which is the thinking mind, processes it. The first five, remember, the first five functions are just to bring in the information. It doesn't do anything else. The ear brings it all. That's music. That's it. That's all it does. It brings in the sound, and the mind, sixth consciousness, says, ah, that's music. You see the two things? The cooperation, the, 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 uh, the uh, collaboration between the consciousnesses. The first five function is bring in data, bring in external data. The sixth consciousness is the one that processes it. They recognize it, recognizes it, or uh, and 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 say, and and and, uh, and uh, there's a processing. Okay, it recognizes a sound, and then it says, and it says, well, it sounds like rock music. It sounds like classical music. Okay, or is it a trumpet, or is it a, or or a, a trombone? And so it it constantly does that. It processes constantly. So far, so good. That's what we. That's how we. Uh, use our energy, processing information constantly. Okay? This is another consciousness called seventh consciousness, and another last two are seventh consciousness and eighth consciousness. Eighth consciousness is the store consciousness. That's questions about. The store consciousness here is the one that stores all the information. Okay? Mm. Uh, all the karmas that we create are stored in that eighth consciousness. So far, so good. Hmm. And between the six consciousness, so you see below, if you will, the five consciousness, below here, the five consciousness. The six consciousness on top is called the mind king. It is the king. It is in charge of the five consciousness. You see that? So this is called a mind king. So far, so good. These are important jargons you need to know. But this is the, this is this is the Buddhist wisdom. This is this is how we structured. That's how God made us, if you will. You talk to Catholic, they say God made us, but they forgot to tell their own kind that how God created them. You know, with the five consciousnesses down here and the mind king, the six consciousnesses up here, which is the king. So far, so good? Okay? Now, there is a connection between the sixth and the eighth. Because the eighth, it stores everything. It's like a hard drive. Anything that we do, we remember, and all those things are stored in the eighth consciousness. And between the eighth and the sixth consciousness, there's something called seven consciousness, which is the conduit, if you will. So far, so good. Now, you know as much as the Buddha. Isn't that cool? That's Buddha's wisdom. Please don't tell the Catholics. We got to have, we keep, got to keep our secrets. Remember? Okay.
Knowledge is power, is that, is that, didn't someone say something like that? Okay, so that's how it works. Mm. The one thing you need to remember on this important concept is that the seventh consciousness, what does it do? Okay, the eighth is very simple, it stores, that's all it does, it has nothing else. It's like your uh, A1 storage place by the freeway there. In America, we have, uh, especially in Los Angeles, we, we, uh, we rent because property prices are here too expensive. So we, we rent uh, storage spaces by the freeways and there's uh, AAA storage, A1 storage, A2 storage. So 800 is like those places. You just put things there. That's all it does. It does nothing else. But however, this eight consciousness is like this unlimited hard drive. What is it? You buy a uh, Apple MacBook Pro M2. What's the maximum hard drive can you have? SSD you can have. One, huh? One terabyte. Oh, you are old school. Do it. What's the biggest ter uh, MM2 MacBook Pro M2 SSD drive you can have? Well, this guy is even worse. Google it quickly, quickly. <laughs> as far as I remember, at least two terabytes, maybe even to four. Okay, it's an M2, come on. Never mind. So, uh, so this, this eighth consciousness is a humongous, limitless hard drive. It stores everything. Okay, however, between six and eight, he has to go through seven consciousness, okay, uh, which is called the self or ego. That's what your ego is called in Buddhism, seven consciousness or the, the uh, mana consciousness. Is it mana? I forgot the name. Eighth is called Alaya Consciousness. That's Sanskrit scream, Alaya Consciousness. And the seventh, someone counts me out. Come on. Anyone remembers? Anyway, it's, it's, uh, it's a colloquial name for it is the ego. How does that work? Remember the mind processes information. Eighth Consciousness stores information. However, between six and eight, it has to go through seven who says, uh, seven massages it. He says, uh, this is music. Yeah? He says, this is classical music. Sixth consciousness says, he recognizes, this is classical music. Okay? And then this information then stores it into the eighth consciousness says, so that in the future you can recognize it's classical music. You see how it works. The kids, when they grow up, uh, we, we train them, we give them, we feed them information. We make them listen to the radio. Okay? We give them a ride, listen to the radio, and, say, and, they listen, and, 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 uh, and turn on our classical music, and then we tell them, hey, son, this is classical music. Notice that? That's how we learn. That's how we, we teach our children. So that information, son, this is classical music, that is stored in the eighth consciousness. So far, so good? That's all that happens. The one thing that further complicates things for us as confused people is the seventh consciousness that at massages even further. It says, it's good classical music, bad classical music, uh, classical music. So the seventh conscious or the ego, it massages as I like it, I don't like it, I don't care, okay, and so forth. And that's the nature of the seventh consciousness, that we have this I like, I dislike, I hate, I don't care. And that's what the ego does. It distorts things. It, the facts ha occurs at the sixth consciousness that says, this is classical music, this is rock music. However, okay, that's just, those are facts still, okay? 
But when it goes to storage, it has to go through seven. Seven says, I like. This is good classical music. Okay? Yeah. And then it stores into the eighth contrast. It says, this is good classical music. So far, so good. That's how it works. So can you access it? Uh, naturally, it is a storage process, and you can retrieve it as well. So it's a matter of whether you, can, uh, you are able to retrieve it. You know? uh, remember, this is an a, a, a unlimited hard drive, if you will. So it's like any hard drive, when you retrieve information, you need time. Okay? Maybe have you seen those wine racks in those fancy French restaurants? that they have, they built this, uh, this elevator that uh, where they, they, they see uh, a, a robot arm going up, you know, in this elevator made of glass, and it, it, it picks out a wine bottle and pulls it out, okay? That's called retrieval and storage, okay? Same thing with our information. Hmm. It's about whether we can, our retrieval process is good enough to access it or not. So meaning that if information, and this, this information here is stored, okay, limitlessly, lifetime after lifetime. This lifetime you have this huge uh, hard drive of information, and it's appended to, uh, to the prior lifetime as well. As you can see, this limitless hard drive has so much information that it may not always be possible for you to retrieve it. Okay? Uh, so the only person who can always have access to it is the Buddha. So far, so good. The Buddha has access to that hard drive constantly. So he looks at you and says, Ah, in a prior life, you were my mother. So now I look at you, I feel like wonton soup. I have a craving of wonton soup. Okay? Uh, so, because that's a retrieval. So far, so good? Mm. You have, oh, you associate, in prior life, you associate your mother with wonton soup. So now you, you have a craving of wonton soup. You don't know why. Okay. So the tree, retrieval is what, uh, what uh, Min called by memory, access to memory and so forth. And that's, that's how it works. So the, the answer after all this background information is not always possible for us to access the information, including bodhisattvas. Bodhisattvas don't necessarily uh, have the ability to access everything. So it's, for us, it's haphazard, it's a lot of different conditions that beyond our control, including bodhisattvas. Okay? Uh, further complicated by your karmic obstructions. Uh, for example, mm. in a prior life, you, uh, you, you, uh, you um, mm, impede learning from others. You confuse people. Okay, you brainwash your children. So, and you, and you don't uh, allow them to go to school, for example. That happens, you heard that right? happening in less developed countries, right? I mean, it's, uh, you go to the, the field, the farm field and work for me, and, and uh, you have to help out the family, so you can't go to school. Especially you're a girl. You don't go to school, you work. Because eventually I marry you off. I, I mean, I have to pay your, your future husband money to take you off by hands. Sounds familiar? Oh, these rich people, uh, country people, they're so soft. They don't know what life really means for the real people. You know what I mean? Yeah. So anyway, so you, you have the common instruction. You obstruct your children. Uh, from learning, from developing the brains, and now your turn, your children will obstruct you from learning, from accessing all the information as well. So it's called karmic retributions. Okay? 
It's a little bit beyond our control to always have secure, secure access to our information. YouTube, go ahead. From Diego, Master, so when the data is stored in the eighth consciousness, is it already modified by the ego? The data we retrieve from the eighth consciousness is already under the judgment of the ego? So what happens, good question, what happens, you have the data from sixth consciousness, it says, and it goes to storage. It's automatic, by the way. When you know, when the sixth consciousness knows that this is classical music, it says, it stores right away, so in the future, you can recognize it's classical music. So far, so good? And remember, that that's storing process is, is automatic. So it constantly stores information. The sixth consciousness is constantly storing information through our sense organ. That's why the disk drive, the hard drive we have is, is humongous, okay? So it stores automatically, and remember, it's not, it's still one more step that most people are not aware of, is that the ego says, I like, I don't like, I like, I don't like, I like, I don't like, constantly, in that, with the information. So that's why, so when it's stored, it says, this is classical music that I like. Hmm? This is, this, is, this is rap music I don't like. Okay? So it's stored in the Eighth Consciousness. When you retrieve it, it's the same information. as This is the Eighth Consciousness from a rap. This is a rap music from uh, the brothers, which I don't like. So it goes back into your Sixth Consciousness and says, I don't like this music. So the information you have when you retrieve it is now distorted. So it starts out with it's rap music that stores in the eighth conscious so that it recognizes it. It's part of its knowledge base, if you will. However, it goes through this process called massaging by the ego. It says, I like, I don't like. So it stores it. Says, this, is your, this is rap music that I don't like. So when you retrieve it, the sixth consciousness memory says, this is bad rap music. You see how it distorted. So everything we know tends to be distorted by like and dislike, like and dislike. YouTube, go ahead. From Diego, Master, once I heard you said that serving the Buddhas are the best blessings we can plant. How can we serve the best possible way? Also, um, why are Ahats called sound hearers? Okay. Are we done with the uh, eight consciousness question? Any anything before we change topics? Any questions? Clarifications? Uh, yes, Master. On the retrieval process, so if is the Buddha also limited? Like, if he the Buddha wants to access information f that was stored when uh, he had an ego a long time ago. So now he's a Buddha, he retrieves it, it's still, he still only gets the filtered information because it was stored filtered. No. Why not? Anyone who is not sleeping when I explain the first half hour about the consciousnesses? Anyone whose head is clear enough so that their legs are not hurting, so that you can remember why I explained? <laughs> huh? What do you think? Yunga, yes? Yellow.
You have to turn on the power. Can you someone help her out? Check it. You, 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 you tap. I know, it's still not on. What? There you go. Go back to yellow. The green light here tells you is the, this power. A di đà Phật, con nghĩ rằng khi mà khi mà Đức Phật lấy dữ kiện từ trong thước thứ 8 ra thì ngài không có theo cái tuần tự, ngài không có đi qua cái thước thứ 7, bởi vì thước thứ 7 của ngài đã chuyển thành cái bình đẳng tánh trí rồi. Thành ra cái cái chuyện mà bị bóp béo nó không nó không còn nữa. Aha, uh -huh. oh, okay, don't need to translate. <laughs> if you want to learn real wisdom, you better learn Vietnamese. <laughs> huh? Anyone else? That gives the non Vietnamese a chance. You see, it's, uh, the Vietnamese is head on, he's dead on. Yeah. Anyone? Are you on strike? Anyone else? The answer is the, if the Buddha, you become a Buddha, there's no more consciousness. Remember? The premise is you turn, you enlighten, you turn the consciousness into wisdom already. How can there be any more consciousness? So the question is stupid. Uh, is that fair to say? <laughs> Go ahead, wait. Well. A Di Đà Phật, khi mà Đức Phật lấy cái tin trong cái thức thứ tám ra đó, thì ngài cũng giống như là cái người lấy tin ra để báo ra vậy thôi. Chẳng hạn như ngài lấy cái tin ra hồi xưa là ngài giết đại bà Đạt Đa để giành gia tài, xô xuống núi. Thì Ngài cũng thật là hồi xưa tôi xô nó xuống núi vậy, 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 tôi dành giả tài. Mà bây giờ đối với con mắt Đức Phật là giác ngộ thì cái đó đúng hay sai, Đức Phật biết. Nhưng mà cái tin tức lấy ra nó vẫn như vậy thôi. Giống như mình vô thư viện, lấy cuốn sách ra, nó vẫn cuốn sách đó thôi. Uh -huh. No translation. <cười> Master, do you want me to translate? No. <laughs> Anyone else? Give the non-Vietnamese a chance to... <laughs> Anyone else? Non-Vietnamese has an opinion. <laughs> hmm? I see, this is why I feel strongly you should teach your children the mother's language, the mother's tongue language. Okay. Uh, YouTube, go ahead. From Diego, is that why we have bad energies from previous life too, because the data is distorted? No, it's more involved than that. Well, anyway, yeah, so go ahead and translate. Oh, God, the non-Vietnamese have no chance at all. How do, I don't know how they're going to make it through lives, their lives. And this is, uh, you know, without any real wisdom. <laughs> okay, earlier, Yêu Nga would say that uh, the Buddha, when he retrieved the data from the eighth conscious, he did not go through the regular process that he did not go through the seventh conscious because the seventh conscious already transformed into the uh, wisdom of uh, equanimity. So that's why there's no distortion. And Venerable Sinchu, he said that the Buddha, when he retrieved 
the um, information from the eighth consciousness, he only get the information and then he, like for example, he get the information and he knows that in the past life he killed his cousin uh, Deba Dada because um, he was uh, greedy for uh, the inheritance. So that's why he killed Deba Dada and then that's that he retell uh, the story like that, but it just like the raw information, the Buddha with his wisdom, he already know, uh, he, he can make the distinguish. And then, so the process that he took out the information is similar that you go to the library, you took out the book, that's it. Any clarification requested? Anyone would like to request more clarification? If you don't, then I assume you understand everything. Okay, so that's how it works. Okay? So, finally, the question is about can we make sure we can access the information? Is, uh, the answer is why? Why bother? Why must you access everything? Sometimes it's much better if you talk to a shrink who says sometimes better for you to forget. Don't access those things. Let it, let, you know, let it, you know, forget them. Let it, you know, let it disappear. It's okay. Let the information decay. Why? Why bother remembering? Just, just remember things that you need to remember and that's important. That's, that's the main thing. Yes, yellow. A di đà Phật. Dạ thưa Thầy, có khi thì cũng phải cần lấy ra Thí dụ như là thời Đức Phật còn tại thế, có một ông lão 80 tuổi đến xin xuất gia. Thì Ngài Xá Lợi Phất á, nhìn so, trong 80 kiếp, thấy ông lão này không hề có gieo duyên với Phật Pháp, thì nói là ông không thể xuất gia. Nhưng mà Đức Phật thì có cái... Uh, trí huệ sâu xa hơn là ngài thấy được vô lượng kiếp cho nên nói là ông lão này đã từng bị cọp đuổi và ông leo lên trên cây ông đã có nói nam mô phật thì đó là cái duyên giúp cho ông có thể xuất gia vì vậy cái kho trà kho dự trữ đó không mình không xóa nó nhưng mà khi mình cần thì mình phải lấy ra a di đà phật Um, Master, I feel that sometimes we, um, we do need to get the information. Like for example, when the Buddha was in the world and there was an 80 years old man that he asked permission to become a left home person and Shariputra, he looked back 80 uh, Kalpa, 80 kalpas back and then he said, no, this man did not uh, blend any blessing with the Buddha, so he doesn't have enough blessing to become a left-home person. But the Buddha, because he can look back countless, countless kalpas, so he said there was one lifetime that when the tiger was chasing after this man, and then he run and, and then he climbed up the tree, and when he was up there, he uh, said, Namo Buddha, because of that, now he has enough blessing to become a Buddha, uh, to become a left home person. So that's why sometimes we do need to retrieve back information. Wait, wait, I saw something that uh, caught my attention. Wei Mountain, uh, Min raised his uh, microphone very quickly. He went like this, and all of a sudden, the sign goes up and says, Wei Mountain has a question. Who did that? That's impressive. Huh? How did people know? How, how did 
Who, who, who put on this, that, that, that thing, Weimar in question? Uh, Is it here? Sunim. Huh? Suju. Soju Sunim. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. okay. The Korean ones in Wei Mountain Temple. Okay, okay. I'm curious. You see, uh, I'm, I'm, I thought, is there some kind of magic, spiritual power or something that Min has developed recently? And that he's weep. <laughs> and it comes up electro electronically right away. Uh, okay, very good. Uh, wait, wait, a couple of things uh, before I forget. Okay? Uh, but let let uh, uh, because Min raised a question before, so let me let me hear from Min first before I I uh, I uh, uh, make the correction. When you ask the information, go ahead, Min. Yes, Master. Um, you, you asked the question why we want to re retrieve it, and you said that we uh, something we should not try to remember. Uh, yeah, th th there's bad memory we want to forget. But there's a lot of good things that, that we want to access to. Uh, for example, sutra that we read, or mantra that we want to remember. There's so many things that, that would be so beneficial if we could have access to those things. That's the reason I'm asking. The main reason is to um, kind of retrieve those uh, memories so that way uh, you can recite mantra and remember the sutras. Okay, very good. Yeah. So, uh, number two, Wei Mountain question. Get the, let the old monk uh, answer you. Tại vì Phật, cái cô Diệu Nga mới nói ngày sáng là Phật ông già leo cây rồi đó là cái đó cái thấp để mà giảng cho tiểu thừa thôi. Mình không có cái đó bây giờ mình đang ở cái đốn ngộ pháp đốn ngộ. Tức là hôm qua thầy giảng đó, cái tâm mình khi mình không suy nghĩ đó Trong đó nó có Phật sẵn mở tổ, nó tức tâm tức Phật Thì lúc đó ông già bà lão gì cần gì trong đó nữa Thành ra mở tổ mới nói là khi mà mình, cái nhân quả nó xảy tới đó Là mình biết của mình Tốt hay xấu mình nhập nhận hết Là sống cứ với cái tâm mà, mà không khởi vọng tưởng là mình biết nó là mình buông, mình không theo nó Thì cứ sống mua như vậy thôi, đói thì ăn, lạnh thì lấy áo mặc vô Nhân quả thì mình biết vậy là nó tới với mình là do mình tạo đó, mình trả thôi Cái đó là gọi là đúng ngộ chứ không có ông già nào leo ở đâu Cái đó là giảng cho Sá là Phật là tượng trưng lúc đầu thôi Chứ Sá là Phật cũng là một vị Phật mà thị hiện vậy thôi Thành ra mình bây giờ đang ở cái pháp đúng ngộ của lục tổ Khởi lên buông, khởi lên buông Và trong lúc buông thầy ơi nói là không có suy nghĩ đó lúc đó là ngoại tổ nói tâm tức Phật Phật tức tâm mà qua thầy mới giảng kinh quan em xin hết um, Master whatever you nghe said earlier about the story of the old man and Sariputra those are uh, for the low level for Hinayana but now we are learning about um, sudden enlightenment. And like, like yesterday during the lecture, Master said that uh, we don't need to give rise to any thought because the Buddha, we already endowed with the Buddha inside us. And like um, we just need to have that kind of awareness or like uh, Matsu, he say like, this mind is the Buddha, the Buddha is the mind. So we just need to uh, let go of things, let go of the false thought, do not let it arise, and then you leave, uh, like um, you, you have that kind of awareness, like if you are hungry, you know to eat. If you are cold, you know that you put on more uh, jacket. And then you know that it's the cause and effect. And then if the retribution come, you have to undergo. So those are the things that we have to learn about the sudden enlightenment. And if it arises, then you just need to uh, drop it. And let me ask the old monk, then is it okay to get upset at someone? Tôi nghe câu không rõ.
mình đúng ra trên theo cái lý là mình không có giận tại vì ai giận ngũ quẩn dây không mình cũng vậy họ cũng vậy là một cái một cái qua đó mưa không một cái ảo giác một cái cái yêu lý sinh thôi When was the last time you got angry? Nếu mà mình ăn đi là mình mình mắc mít thắt rồi. Translate properly. When was the last time you got angry? Con không nhớ nhưng mà trên cái nguyên tắc cái lý đó, cái người tu phải theo như vậy đó. Thì trong cái quá trình đó có thể mình tham, có thể mình nổi giận. Thì Phật mới cho mình những dụng cụ như 42 thủ nhãn hoặc là chú Lăng Nghiêm để mình phụ cho mình dứt những cái đó đó. Let me be specific. When was the last time you got afflicted at someone? À, con không nhớ. I don't understand. I don't uh, remember. <cười> Okay, let me let me explain to you. Uh, the uh, each one of us, depending on our levels, until we become enlightened, we have uh, we have uh, limited uh, uh, we have limitations. For example, like you guys said earlier, the arhats, the four stage arhats, like Shariputra, Mahabhakalyayana, and so forth, they can have access to. Uh, the, uh, they, can, they can go back 80,000 great kalpas of information. Okay? So whatever happened in the past, up to 80,000 great kalpas, the fourth stage Ahat can remember. So the uh, people at higher level, like a bodhisattva, they can remember even further back. Okay? Uh, and the story, anecdote that uh, she gave is... Uh, is uh, it points to limitations. Uh, every one of us has limitations, yeah. and so so that's why beyond the old the old man who wanted to become a a, a, a left home person uh, recited Namo Buddha. Okay, uh, long long time ago, beyond the eighty thousand great, great kalpas. That's why the Shariputra, the Arhats of the world, could not see that he did anything good at all. That's why he said, you have no blessings, forget it. You can't become a monk. Right? Well, who do you think you are? You have no blessings, forget it. Okay? So that's what happened. So that's the range, the range concept. Like your, uh, your car, it has a range because you can, you can, your tank can handle so much, your battery can handle so much. That's it. All right? That's limitations. Okay. Now, My answer to the old monk is that you talk theory, but you can't even remember the last time you were afflicted. Then you have no wisdom at all. If you cultivate and you don't even pay attention to your own afflictions, then you're cultivating blindly. That's an important lesson for all of you today. Part of cultivation is to recognize that you're afflicted. Okay? For example, you're crying. Anyone? You're crying. That's an affliction. You have to remember, oh, on such a date, I cried. Okay? Because that's part of cultivation. You need to be aware of the afflictions, especially afflictions that are stronger so that you will be able to effectively deal with them. At the old monk's level, I asked him, when was the last time you got angry? He said, I don't remember. Then the next question, I said, okay, you claim you're not angry. Let me tell you, so when was the last time you got afflicted? He doesn't even remember. That means this guy doesn't cultivate at all. You asked him, when was the last time I was afflicted? I will tell you this morning. There's no 80,000 great cowboys. This is this morning. 
Okay? Now, to the person who asked originally, how do I retrieve information? And he says, I say, why do you need? He says, I, because something are pretty good. What about, you know, what, <laughs> excuse me, what about the, 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 the good memories, the important information like the sutras, the mantras, and so forth? What's the problem with that? Anyone? If you give me the right answer, I will pay you $100. Anyone? Young or old, I will pay you $100 because it's so important. Any takers? Orange. There you go. That's a brave soul right there. Greedy for money. <laughs> yes, Master. Am I on? Yes. It shows a discriminating mind. Discriminating mind. Okay. Five dollars. That's all. <laughs> Anyone else? Five dollars, I don't pay small bills, okay? I don't only deal with hundred dollars. <laughs> because if, if like 20 of you up there say, you know, five dollars, five dollars, I'm gonna go broke. <laughs> Anyone else? Hmm? This is so subtle. It's very important information that I see this guy coming, run into this problem, run to this wall time and time again. Every single time he learns something important, he runs to this wall. He says, Bang! Anyone else? And this is where good information is harmful. How is that? Have you thought of it, my friend? Your good information is harmful to you. Anyone dares tell you that? Hmm? Go ahead, yellow. A di đà phật, bất cứ cái gì mà mình chấp vào đó thì nó cũng hại thôi. Bởi vì mình chấp vô pháp thì chính cái pháp nó hại mình. Nó làm cho mình không có một cái nhìn viên dung được. Thành ra Ừ, con nghĩ uh, dầu là mình pháp đúng hay là tiệm uh, tiểu hay là đại thừa gì đi nữa thì tùy lúc mà mình dịu dụng thôi tùy lúc mà mình thực hành chứ luôn luôn mình nói cái đó tiểu không có được dùng tới thì con thấy cái đó là mình bị thiên lệch phải viên dung thì mới đi tới cái chỗ vô ngại được a di đà phật Master, I think like whatever we attach to are harmful to us. So for example, we, if we are attached to the Dharma, then um, it's also harmful to us because we will not have a complete view of things. Like if we discriminate that it's um, uh, gradual teaching, it's sudden teaching, it's Hinayana, it's Mahayana, uh, it's not good because it depends on the right condition and then sometimes like we need to use the proper teaching because we cannot say like oh it's Hinayana I won't use it no it depends on the condition I leave it to you let's take a vote what is it worth Be nice. <laughs> huh? Anyone? I'd be nice today. 80 bucks. <laughs> but still no cigars. <laughs> Anyone else? Huh? <laughs> Blue, another brave soul. <laughs> um, yes, from the Philippines to uh, from Vietnam, uh, and now we're going to mainland China. 
<laughs> Kidding. <laughs> uh, be, because. Blue, blue. Power up. Is it? There you go. Um, I I think because we don't have a wisdom to identify what's good or what's not good. Okay, how much? Sixty-five. <laughs> <65. laughs> yeah, look, Tuan likes it. <laughs> like, Master is in a good mood today. <laughs> okay, uh, let me give you the answer because we have to go to lunch. How's that? <laughs> Oof. Almost lost a hundred bucks. <laughs> it's very specific. It's not theory at all. Min's problem is that he's so obsessed with the knowledge. Okay? And he says, this is Knowledge, meaning that good knowledge. You see, that's the nature of his question. What if, what, what, if, what if I have good knowledge and I cannot access it? That would be this total disaster. My life will be in trouble. This is, am I, am I right? This, 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 this gnawing fear he has in his gut. It says, I have good information. I want to access it. I want to access it. I don't want to lose it. Am I correct? Can you see that? Huh? So his premise is that I have important information, engineering information, data that I got from my scientific equipment. You know? I spent a lot of time and money and blood and sweat in acquiring it. I want to use it. I don't want to lose it. Okay? That's here. This guy here, locally. <laughs> Down south, this other guy says, I have important information, my knowledge, my wisdom. It's my life. I don't want to lose it. You see that? It's called what? Attachment is a nice word. What's the worst word than attachment? <laughs> huh? Greed? Yeah. What other words? More nasty. Huh? Mary Jo, is she online? We're going to clinical area now. This is that severe. Okay. <laughs> For his level, is very severe. It's called, a nice word is obsession. He's so obsessed by his knowledge. I know, I know. Sounds familiar? I know, and you don't. <laughs> right? And that's what he says. I know, I have my instruments that tell me, give me facts, and you don't. Okay? And that's obsession. What's, what's even a more accurate word? Huh, Evan? What's a more accurate word? More than obsession. It's called bordering on paranoia. Hmm? Yes or no? Paranoia. Knowledge becomes, you paranoid about your knowledge. So knowledge, good knowledge becomes Harmful to you. And it's scary, and that's what that's why you and I got eighty bucks. Good knowledge becomes harmful to you. Okay? And the Buddhism is called the obstruction of what is known. So chu cha. Okay? So, what you know obstructs you. What you know confuses you.
That's the most scary thing about knowledge. You know, and the funny thing is not for him. It's not for him either. Only, it's for all of us. What we know makes us attach to that knowledge. And that's why our knowledge, okay, our experience obstructs us from making further progress. I have, I know of an eight crown bodhisattva who is so stuck on that problem that he will not listen anymore. He says, I know, I know I'm right. However, let me ask you, if your knowledge is right, but it stops you from making further progress, is a good knowledge or bad knowledge? Think about it. Isn't it fascinating? Just because you know, just because you have success, and traps you. You become a victim of your own success, of your own knowledge, of your own wisdom. Let's go so Buddhist wisdom, Buddhist wisdom is incredible. So hmm? the obstruction of what is known. You know it, that's why it stops you. It it entraps you. That's the, one of the most scary things in life is so chang. The knowledge obstructs you. Makes you so proud of yourself. So sure of yourself that you don't listen anymore. You say, hey, I'm right. Okay. And that's what Republicans have problems. Democrats don't have that problems. <laughs> we all agree, right? <laughs> what about Russians and Americans? Just kidding. <laughs> okay. Good questions, good comments, good input, okay? Uh, pretty close, but no, you know, not quite there yet. <laughs> Keep it up. <laughs> you see? So what do you do? Finally, what, do you, what does this guy do? Like Min or uh, that guy there, what do you do? Relax. That knowledge is a problem when you insist on you're so proud of it, and you say, this is what I know, I'm right, okay? You're so sure of it. Uh, just let go. Stop insisting, okay? So same, same in the vein of what he asked, uh, if it's meant for me to be able to retrieve the information, so be it. If I can't retrieve the information, big deal. What do you do? Instead of worrying about knowledge, good knowledge and bad knowledge, uh, about success and failure, about get what you want versus getting not, not getting what you want, what should, what should you worry about? Nothing. <laughs> okay? No, have no worries. And that's wisdom. If you worry, you are trapped in your being right. Okay, so Chu Chang is one of the biggest illnesses of mankind. It's not cancer, it's not depression, it's that knowledge of yours that entraps you and that, 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 that makes you blind to life, to reality. Especially those engineers that I have my, my, mesh, my gauges here. You're telling me I'm wrong? No, you're right. But you're confused. <laughs> 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 
Isn't that fascinating in Buddha's wisdom? I'm fascinated because we all have this problem called Suo Chu Chang. The knowledge, the obstruction of what is known. That knowledge blinds you and traps you. And that's why you're stuck. You're there. You're your own prisoner. You live in your own cocoon. And, and you can't be reached. You're so sure of yourself. So what's, what's the antidote? Relax. Relax. Don't insist so much that I need to have it. And this is, I need to have good information. This is important information. I'm going to hang on to the information. That knowledge there is not necessary. You meditate, and when the time comes, you need to know something. You need something that that's, uh, will help you. It will come. That's from your Buddha nature. It transcends this obstruction of what you know. If you meditate, it will come. How? How does it come about? It's not about the ability for you to access information. How does information come, Brady? Let me tell you. Would you like to know, Brady? No, Brady says, no. It's time, lunch time for me. <laughs> no, please, Master. Please answer? Myself? <laughs> what do you do then? How do you overcome this? If you're on your own, I'm hungry. Are you hungry? <laughs> if you're on your own, okay, then what do you have? Your blessings. If you have the blessings, information will come to you. Because of your blessings. It doesn't matter how far away, you know, maybe 80,000 kalpas away, lifetimes away, it still comes to you because it's your blessings. Because you planted that in the past as well. Remember that? The bad things, the good things, they're all planted. And eventually, if it's meant for you, your blessings mature, it'll come to you. There's no need to worry. It's not to say, how come I'm not successful? How come I'm not getting what I want? It's because the blessings are not enough. Stop blaming yourself. Stop beating yourself, beating up on yourself. You're solving the wrong problem. You, you, you know. I just remind Ben, I just remind the engineer here, you know, the guy in the back, he says, stop worrying. Just accrue blessings and when it's meant to be, it's going to happen. Does it make sense, Min? Huh? Don't say, uh, I, 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 need to, I need to access it. Oh, oh, it's so important to me. Makes a lot of sense, Master. Thank you very much. That's your biggest problem we have. The more I teach you, the more, oh, this is good information. I don't want to lose it. There's <laughs> no need. I keep on telling you, you hear one thing, one ear goes out the other. You don't, you don't care to remember even. This is why I'm against Master Shiva. I says, you, wanna, you learned something today, I want you to go tonight. Okay, you take notes and go, go home tonight and review it and then memorize it and then do it again tomorrow and do it again after the day after tomorrow. To me, too Chinese. That's why you're going to have all these abstractions of what, what is known. You hear it, you let it go. You hear it, you let it go. Because if you have the blessings, it will come back to you. That's all that matters. The main thing is you have to plant the seeds in your consciousness, and when you're blessing, let your blessings pull them out. Don't be like men who says, I want to be able to pull it out at will, because me. Does it make sense? Stop being so paranoid, so, so control freaks, that I, 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 I must be able to do it. We lost some customers. <laughs> bye bye. Uh, pack something. Go. They have food. Please pack something home. Bring some home. Okay. Thank you for coming. You got that? Relax. Don't worry. Don't worry. How you know? Uh, is it going to be the way I want? Okay. Uh, doesn't matter. 
just plant blessings, just, just, just do the right things and let go. That's all. If it's meant to be, it's going to happen. Don't beat yourself to death. Okay? Don't be so hard on yourself. That's baloney. Does it help? Hmm? It's okay. Relax. Just live, man. I mean, <laughs> hey, brother. Oh, I don't mean to encourage the kids to do this. <laughs> but you see, relax. Do you have something to say, uh, Toy? Thank you, Master. I think I have to give back to you a hundred dollars. Is that a take from you? Now I got my hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Good questions. Good interaction. You all, you know, when we talk like this, I show. I it confirms to me where you are. And that I'm very pleased with with uh, with uh, our able to our being able to share uh, dharma, speak dharma for each other. Thank you, and uh, let's go have lunch. <laughs>